My name is Roz Alford and my company's name is ASAP Solutions Group. I do IT professional services which encompasses staffing, which is staff augmentation, um, managed services, and end-to-end -end project work, for for, mostly for Fortune 100. Well, I went to school um, at the University of, of Frankfurt, which was the Johann Wolfgang von Goethe Institute in Frankfurt. My parents um, are German, and we immigrated to the U.S. And when I was very young. And uh, I went back to college there and really was a linguistics major, language major, and then um, transferred to the University of Chicago because they accepted my credits and uh, graduated from the University of Chicago in 1968. And um, I had hoped that I would work for the State Department as an interpreter. I wanted to work, I either wanted to work for, for the Peace Corps, you know, for Sergeant Shriver, or I was going to go and work for the State Department as an interpreter. But I graduated early, I was only 20, and I didn't do my homework, and they wouldn't hire me till I was 23, so I was kind of lost in limbo without knowing where I was going to work. And it just so happened that Kraft Foods here in Chicago, they were located in Chicago at that time, had come over to the university. And uh, they hired me on the spot, and they put me into personnel. And I was an assistant personnel director for at Kraft Foods. So always working with human capital, with people. And uh, worked there. Um, and then met my husband many years later, um, who was a native of Atlanta, moved to Atlanta. And I had this idea. I, I was involved in IT at Kraft. They were just building a IT department. And um, at that time, you know, IT took up a, a computer, took up a whole floor. You know, they were going from key punch basically to a computer. So I was very fortunate that they sent me back to school and I got a, a degree in, at that time, data, data processing and did the hiring for the DP department back in the 60s. And from that, I knew I wanted to stay in IT and I knew that there was a market for IT and, and getting people placed in IT. And so when I went back and we moved to Atlanta, um, my husband encouraged me to get into the business and to do it on my own, and so I did. I worked for about three years with a company in Atlanta um, that did the business so I could learn a little bit of what was going on and then started in 89 on my own. Well, for my industry, I would say the skills that are required are, of course, human resource skills. I mean, you have to be able to deal with people. You have to be dealing with them on the psychology side. You need to know labor laws. You have to be a good negotiator. Um, you know, and so it, it, it's really people skills. Obviously, you need good computer skills as well, you know, and, and no technology. The first thing that they have to do is they have to have a passion for what it is that they want to do. I don't think that they can just go into saying, you know, I think I'm going to start a business and I'm going to do X, Y, Z. It doesn't work like that. You better know what it is you, you better be good at it. If you're going into um, a math field of some sort or whatever, you better know how to, you better know math, right? If you're going to go and be an author and you're going to, or a journalist or whatever, you better know how to write. Um, and if you don't, you can't take on that profession. And I think that's where a lot of people um, get hurt. So they, they come up with an idea and they go off and they say, this is what I'm going to do. But they have no real idea of how that business runs. So I would suggest to anybody starting out that they first know what they want to do, then go to work a little while anyway in that field, and then see if that's really what they enjoy and if the passion is there then go on to the next step and then create um, a new entity from that and different ideas on how to grow and make that different. I think that if you would ask most entrepreneurs how they stay balanced, most of us probably are not. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm a workaholic. As I told you, I'm very hands-on. Um, it's hard, you know, you give up a lot. When you're growing your business and you're entrepreneur and you want it to grow, you've got to work it. And working it means that you might have to work 12 or 13 hours a day. The clock doesn't stop at 5 o'clock. 
And uh, even today, I find that. I mean, I've cut down from working 16 hours a day. I maybe work 10, but I still work a lot. Well, I mean, for a, a, young, a young person starting in business, a young person starting in business today is going to be very, very difficult. I personally um, would not go on the partner side. I have a partner, um, and, and I chose my partner 10 years after my business was in existence, another woman, and we, we, we're, she's the sales side, I'm the operations side. Would I do that again? I'm not 100% sure. Um, I would, I think that it's very difficult. They're always, and especially if you're a 50-50 partner, which in my case we did do, um, and you want to make sure, you know, on, on partnerships, you know, there's good and bad, right? But for young people, if they can do it on their own, I would try it on their own. In the economy the way it is, if it's something that costs them, where they're going to have to have access to capital, they're going to have a hard time. So, you know, I think the quality of, of being an entrepreneur in general is you have to have a passion for something. And for me, it was the passion of doing something for other people. And uh, I think that if you ask most entrepreneurs, I mean, it, the passion has to be there or else it doesn't happen.